Hello everyone. Hi everyone. Um, so good to be with you a week again. Yes, and we're just looking forward to share a little bit with you tonight and we trust that it's really going to encourage you in this time. Yes, and so the purpose of tonight's uh, broadcast is really just for impartation, to um, give truth, to for the Holy Spirit to really minister truth and life to you, for the Holy Spirit to really uh, impart deep into your spirit and to give you an understanding, hello Martha, to give you an understanding of um, yes. God's favor upon your lives and upon your um, businesses during this time. Amen. So Bill's going to open in prayer. Yes. All right, Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you're a good God and that you love us and you want the best for us. And we just thank you, Lord, in this season that you're with us, that you would guide us by your Spirit. Tonight, we thank you, Lord, for every single person under our voice, Lord. We ask you that you would minister through us, Lord, that we would touch Whoever needs to be touched with mm. your word tonight. And Lord, mm. we would encourage whoever needs to be encouraged tonight yeah. through the prophetic word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So this is an exciting subject. I've been uh, praying for the last two weeks as to what God wants us to say. And just welcome to all those who are first timers. Welcome to yes. Sari and Elizabeth, our friends from Namibia all the way from Madi Mali as well, Ella. And so uh, if you uh, have a friend uh, who you know should hear this uh, tonight, then we want to encourage you just yes. uh, send the repeat button or whatever, like and share, okay? And um, don't uh, be afraid to ask questions, you know, make comments, okay? It's always uh, good just to hear from you and and. And so uh, whatever the trial has been this week, we pray that even as we minister to you this, this mm -hmm. hour, that God will really just encourage you. Hello, Phyllis Timina. Just bless you, Darwin Lewitz from Middleburg. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. Shireen from uh, uh, Cape Town. Simon from Pretoria. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lauren from Edenvale. Yeah, please let us know where you're coming from because um, if you look, see me looking down all the time, it's not that I'm disinterested. I'm actually writing down your names as they pop up so that I pass them on to Janet and I, and then we're going to, uh, uh, when we prophesy a little bit later, we look at the names and we really trust the one that Lord wants to speak to tonight that we would minister to him. Just like we would do in the church, we call you out, but we can't be with you, but we can be with you through the internet, and so we're going to do the same thing. So... Just let us know, and then I'm jotting down. So, um, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Okay. Yep. Amen. So don't forget to like and share. Okay. And then, as you know, we are Janet and Bill. Okay. So, all right. So we're looking at the subject of favor tonight, and let's have a look at the definition of favor. I looked this up obviously on Google today, and and it's an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual, okay? And how do we demonstrate our favor? We feel or we show approval or preference for somebody or something. Hello, Hirit from Rustenburg. And so if we look at uh, the scriptures and we see the uh, very difficult things that people went through in, in um in the Bible, for example, Daniel, we look at the very difficult things that Joseph went through. We look at the very difficult things that Noah went through. Hello, Ed Albert and Sally, all the way from Canada. God yes. bless you. So encouraging to see you. And dear Walt, uh, if we look at all these situations that men and women went through in the Bible, we just look at Esther. Uh, the favor of God came through for them. Yanni, God is favoring you. Hannes, God is favoring you. Amen. And so um, God wants to favor you. And so I want to encourage you tonight that uh, as you think about favor, uh, it must become part of you. It must become part of your psyche. It must become part of your um, 
Man, said Hello, Heloise and Nicolette, it must become part of who you are as a person. Because you see, favor will do things for you and favor will break through for you when nothing else can break through. Amen. Okay, and so apart from the fact that favor is an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual, okay, beyond what is usual in these uh, difficult circumstances, all right? Favor is a spiritual force, and you are favored tonight. God favors you, okay? The Bible, uh, in the book of Luke, it, it says how Jesus grew in favor with God and man. So, although Jesus was this young child when he came into the world, he had to grow up, and he had to be taught. He had parents, you know, he, he grew in uh, within a family structure. But the favor of God, the blessing of God, the favor of God was on him. And so where was that favor shown? That favor was shown in what he did. That favor was shown in his relationships. Even as a young boy at the age of 12, he was found in the temple, okay? And he was learning the Torah just like any other Jewish young man uh, at the age of 13 would become a man. And so uh, Jesus be, had a bar mitzvah, and, and he had to learn the Torah. He had to learn, obviously, as a, as a young man, uh, God was preparing him for his ministry. And so tonight, uh, we understand that the favor of God was upon him, and he learned to move in that favor. He learned to understand he learned to experience that favor and for you and us uh, in this very you and I in this very difficult time that the church is going through that the world is going through this is a time where God wants to show you his favor yeah yes you know David uh, Janet was talking about kindness and um, if you read the Bible about David, and David um, said, and David had loving kindness. And this was kindness above the normal kindness. David would be kind to people mm. above what was expected of that day. And, you know, the thing is that if you go down the generations, God keeps saying, and God came through for people that didn't even deserve it. And, and he says in the scripture, he says, I'm not doing it for, their, for them. I'm doing it for their father, David for his loving kindness. Mm. So loving of kindnesses can be sown. When we sow kindness, okay, it mm. can even be generational. Amen. Mm. So David received the kindness and, and he demonstrated the kindness. So we have to understand tonight that favor is something that God wants you to receive in the natural. Yes. It's something that we have to renew our minds to, it's something that he wants to build deep into our DNA yeah. that you must understand tonight that no matter what has taken place in your life, that even in these difficult situations, even in these uh, um, difficult trials that you might have gone through in your life and are continuing to go through, God wants to turn it all around by you tonight accepting his favor. And knowing his favor and understanding that the favor of God is upon you. Why? Because he created you in Christ Jesus. He created you as a child that would be favored. Amen. He created you to live amongst those that would be favored. He created you to demonstrate the favor of God. And so many times we talk about things like the anointing, and we talk about things like the, the gifts of the Spirit. We talk about uh, things like the power of God. But, you know, uh, we need to be able to demonstrate those things, okay? When the world looks at us, they must be able to see the favor of God on us. But favor begins by us accepting and changing our mindset mm. about who we are yeah. and and understanding who God has created us to be. He's not just created you tonight to be average. Now, you might come from a very average family. You might have had uh, all the, the, the um, 
you know, apartheid uh, atrocities against you. You might have come from a place of poverty. Um, you, the days that you were growing up, maybe you were very, very poor. You might come from a broken family tonight. You might come from an alcoholic background. You might come from, a, you know, an abused background. No matter what background you come from, it doesn't change God's favor on your life. Amen. You see, God created Adam and Eve in the garden. The first thing he did was he blessed them. And what did he bless them with? He blessed them with favor. He blessed them with fruitfulness. He blessed them to multiply. He blessed them to procreate. He blessed them to be successful. And so the blessing of, of God is, is not upon your life tonight because of what you do, but because of who you are. Or whose you are. And whose you are. Yes, and you know, we are children of God, and the Bible is very clear that we when we when we give our lives to the Lord, we become children of God. And when we are children of God, the favor of God is with us no matter where we go. And um, you know, um, these are the things that we need to understand because when we understand that we have favor, we, we it should change our expectation. Mm. Because when we have the wrong expectation, mm. then we don't expect favor. Mm. So mm. when you walk into a business deal or, or whether you go into the job, start to expect God's favor. Maybe mm. Janet can share a little bit about favor in the marketplace. Yes, you see, uh, you are God's image through Christ Jesus. And God's nature is to favor you. And so therefore, when you accept that favor and that God will use men and he'll use man, he'll use uh, um, human beings to favor you, okay? But you can also reject that favor depending on who you are <laughs> and the way you see yourself, the way you feel about yourself, the way you think about yourself. And this is why Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that we have to renew our minds, Okay, and that we renew that we renew is, and transformation is that of a metamorphosis. That you know, a worm doesn't just suddenly become a butterfly and he's not born a butterfly. A worm is born a worm, but he he grows and and he takes on on, on a new dimension. He he, he takes on a, a, his DNA changes. Things like that, and and so obviously he has his everything that you see about him that was so distasteful becomes so beautiful. Why? Because of transformation. And so, in order to have favor in the marketplace in these last days, the first thing that we have to understand is that God wants you to accept that favor. God wants you to receive that favor. So I want us just to. Pray a prayer as we start tonight. And I'm going to pray over you. Why don't you just lay your hands on your, your breast or lay your hands on your heart. I mean your heart. Um, and I want you just to receive that tonight and, and to just say, Father, I thank you. You just say after me. Say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you that I am highly favored. That I am highly favored. I thank you tonight, I thank you tonight that you show favor towards me. You show favor towards me. That even in difficult circumstances. Even in difficult circumstances. You are favoring me. You are favoring that me. That I have high favor with God and man. That I have high favor with God and man. Amen. Amen. So we have to receive that tonight. And I want to say tonight... That favor doesn't depend on your pedigree. Favor doesn't depend on the family that you were born into. Favor depends on the word of God. As much as the word that you have inside of you, as much as you allow God's word to change you, as much as allow God's word to strengthen you from the inside out, Okay, you will be able to overcome and you will be able to have a fruitful life no matter what is taking place around you. Let me say to you tonight that uh, those that are have great success in life, those that were born 
into very successful homes and, and have strong families, um, strong lineage uh, in terms of um, su successful lineage, uh, strongly, highly educated and, and very successful. Very often those are not the ones that need to use the scriptures on favor. You see, uh, God, David was a shepherd boy and David grew up in the fields. And so he was the least of his father's house. And so he was the one that had to learn the favor of God. He was the one, Joseph was the least of his brothers. They hated him. But look what the favor of God did. Look where, where the favor of God took him. And so this is a, tonight, this message is about translating the favor of God into your personal circumstances concerning your business, into your personal circumstances concerning your finances, into your personal circumstances concerning uh, fin uh, um, family situations. And so we look at, at Joseph, for example, where his brothers hated him and where his brothers sold him into slavery, but yet he was so diligent and he knew that he was highly favored. His father gave him that coat of many colors, and that coat symbolized the favor of God. Okay, that was a mantle. And so I want you to uh, understand tonight that in the realm of the Spirit, you have a mantle of favor upon you. Yes, and, you know, we're talking about the Word of God, and, we, and you know, um, we need to, uh, in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, says that all Scripture um, and is given for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction in righteousness, yes. equipping us for every good work. So mm. we need people to have a balance in this thing because there's a balance to favor, all right? Mm. Um, because balance... I, I remember listening to Ed Cole, the late Ed Cole, and i uh, never forget it, about 20 years ago, and he said something which was has stuck with me, and maybe one of you can remind me the third thing, but two things I stuck with me. One was that communication is the essence of life, and balance is the key to life. Mm. So we need to live a balanced life in this thing. So favor needs to be balanced as well, all right? So we need to balance our favor because... It's about every good work. So we need to show good works. You know, we can we can go to work and say we are highly favored and we, we are highly confess it. But in the meantime, we, we're not good workers. We, we're not diligent. We're slothful. We're lazy. We're all of this. Well, we can confess a million times over that we've got favor. And yes, we are highly favored of God. But when we do not keep the balance of what the word says, mm -hmm. God is then going to bring the correction side of the word. So mm -hmm. we have the goodness of God and the favor of God. But we always have to remember that balance, we have to balance everything. So, you know, hard work is great. But when we put, if we don't balance work and family, then it doesn't please God. So even if you're working more than you should be and you're neg ne neglecting your family, then the thing about favor, you might find that God um, doesn't always work the way your favor is not always working for you because you're out of the will of God or out of the balance of the word of God. And so God will bring us back. It's wonderful, God. He just brings us, gently brings us back. Um, and somehow you will speak to us and communicate to us. So we know that we're out of the balance of the word. And I think that's the biggest mistake people make even with the faith message, they take it out of balance. Mm. So instead of having a balanced life, okay, um, they go on the name and claim it, and um, you know you you know you say it and you'll have it. There is truth in that, okay. <laughs> there is truth in that because confession is very good to possession. So we start with our confession, but it doesn't help us if our heart condemns us. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that our heart will condemn us. So therefore we need to have a balance in life. And that's why the word of God is so balanced. The promises of God, okay, are balanced with the conditions of God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, favor, we are highly favored. We are the children of God. But we also have to walk in a balance in scripture. And we also need to 
walk in humility. Somebody put up humility. Absolutely. And we need to walk in grace. So that's the balance to, to, to the favor. Otherwise, people think we're arrogant, okay, and, um, you know, overconfident. But we need the, we need the humility and grace. Yes. So it's so important that we have the balance of the Word of God, not just run off on one tangent, you know, believing that, you know. And that's when we see our faith not working for us because God is bringing correction to the other side because that's what his 2 Timothy 3 says. It is for correction and reproof. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is there for us to, to walk in favor of God, but it's also there to bring us back into balance so we walk well before God and well before man. Mm -hmm. And that we, 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 favor comes when we are good, ser we serve well, and all of the things that the Word of God says, and we work mm -hmm. well and we work with excellence. Favor comes. Who knows that if you're not a very good worker and you're not and you're slothful in everything, you can confess favor a hundred times, but that does not mean your boss is going to favor you. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Amen. That's right. And, and, you know, that brings us to the place of Daniel. Now, it says here in Daniel chapter 1, verse 9, it says, God had brought Daniel into the favor and the goodwill of all the chiefs of the eunuchs. Why? Because David had, Daniel had an excellent spirit. And you know, if we look at the life of Daniel, everything was working against him. Because here he was a Jewish boy, a Jewish um, a gentleman, uh, and he was serving in a Gentile court. Okay? And, and uh, Gentiles were hated by the Jews, if you understand. And this was in, in, a, a, um, in Babylon, and, and Babylon was one of the most evil of the empires, mm. okay? And here God brings him into favor. Why? Because, you see, he understood his identity. He understood who he was, and he understood that mantle of favor upon his life. And therefore, he was able to work as a, a, a Jewish um, gentleman in this Babylonian empire and have success. And many of us tonight, we often look at the Jews and we think, well, you know, they, they're so successful or they're so um, bombastic or they're so rude or that. But when you understand their upbringing and you understand how from a young, young boy, the favor of God has been imparted to them in terms of their identity, yeah. They grow up with that expectancy of favor upon them. Yeah. And so, you see, you, you, it's, the difference between the Jew and the Gentile tonight is that we are learning to walk in favor. They automatically walk in the favor of God. We are learning to appropriate that favor. We are learning through Christ Jesus tonight that um, our identity has been, has been found in him and the favor of God is upon us. And so that makes, uh, makes up the difference, you know, between a Gentile that doesn't believe in the favor and a Gentile that does believe in the favor of God. Because the one that does believe in the favor of God, uh, it's, we will always see the demonstration of the favor of God on his life through success. Now, let me say to you tonight that in a, a time and in a system where the dollar and the South African rand, where business is going down, um, this is not a time for... Uh, um, witchcraft and this is not a time for manipulation this is not a time for control this is not a time for all the things that one would normally do in business I was speaking to a leader a very very successful leader and uh, worldwide and she's in business and she was saying that one of the common things that happen uh, in business for um, many business people to um, uh, sign contracts and tenders and things like that. There's tremendous manipulation. There's sexual manipulation. There's um, so much witchcraft 
that takes place. And, and you've probably been exposed to that. And so God is saying to you as a believer tonight that this is not the season for that. This is the season where he wants you to be able to tune in and to access and to wear his garment of favor. That no matter what is coming against you, that the favor of God would radiate from your life. And how does that favor radiate from Allah? That favor radiates by the things that we speak. That favor radiates because, you see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker, that which is within your soul tonight begins to be revealed through the words of your mouth. And as you are speaking and as you are confessing and you are living the life that God wants you to have, as you are laying hands upon your budget, as you are laying hands upon your, your bank statements and speaking favor over this, speaking favor over your company, God is released to work for you. Yeah, and you know, Janet was talking about, you know, that in, in, in when we're in business, that we have these all these influences that we're faced with every day. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe if Janet can just bring up the scripture of 2 Peter 3.17, mm -hmm. um, if she can Let's just bring up that cat. scripture. Yep, 3.17. Okay, and it says, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with error of the wicked. And minus says, carried away with the error of lawless people and lost and lost your stead stability. So in this time, it's, it's we have to guard against um, being pulled away with the crowd and with the people who are speaking the wrong things and negative. You know, I, I, last night I was praying, I was reminded um, of of a season I went, my late wife and I went through, where we, we, we had some friends and they, and the Lord reminded me last night to say it was a season of discontentment. And um, what they did, they sowed discontentment uh, for, for where we were fellowshipping. And that discontentment started to grow. You know, sometimes it only starts little, you know, we just start with a few negative things. And, and um, when we look again, we get into, especially at work, we can get in with what everybody else is and we can get into discontentment. So we go into a season and the Lord reminded me in that season, just about nothing worked out well. So, you know, I just want to say that the 2 Peter 3, 17 is very clear. Be careful that you don't get carried away with the error of lawlessness, lawless people, and lose, lost, lose your stability. We need to be stable and rooted in the Word of God. And this is the thing. That's why the Word of God is for, is it's a balance. It brings balance to us. So mm -hmm. when we've got a God in the season that we don't get mm -hmm. carried away with mm -hmm. what everybody's saying. Mm -hmm. we, I, I had an opportunity to minister to somebody a little while ago to mm -hmm. say, you know what? You have an opportunity. Your business, the, it's a big business and it's going, through, it's going through major, major changes and major, major difficulties. Restructuring and, and paying off people. And I really felt the Lord say to them that this is the season that they need to step up and start to speak life. Because it's easy to go with all the people that are, are speaking negative. It's mm. easy to go with the people. You see, to live a healthy and a productive life in the kingdom is not always easy and pretty. Mm. It means we have to make a stand when, the, when things when we see that things are not right, mm -hmm. we need to lift up. And my word to them was that you need to step up to the plate so that those people can look up to you mm -hmm. to see that you are a different spirit. You are not joining the crowd. You are starting to speak life. You are starting to behave in a different manner. And that's exactly uh, what Joshua and Caleb did. They were people of a different spirit. They didn't complain about the, the giants. They didn't complain about all the things. They saw the goodness of God and God would come through for them. Yes. Amen. You see, favor will cause you to overcome in impossible circumstances. Favor will cause the impossibility to become yours. 
Okay, so we have to believe first of all that the favor yes. of God is upon our lives. Now it says here in in Daniel eleven thirty two, it says, "Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. The people who know the favor of God on their lives shall be strong and carry out great exploits." And so, as I was saying, Daniel grew up with this favor, and he knew that it was supernatural that he was put in the king's palace. He knew that it was supernatural that he was put in the den of lions, okay? And he knew the supernatural favor of God in that those lions, their, their mouths were shut. Well, you see, there's, there's the mouth of the lion that is operating and that is being released against you and I in this day. But it's the favor of God that shuts the mouth of the lion. Amen. And how does the favor of God shut the mouth of the lion? By you and I confessing and declaring that we have the mantle of favor upon our lives. You see, favor gives you that edge. Favor gives you that uh, uh, um, influence when others can't have the same influence. You see, favor is when, like Michael says, favor ain't fair. No, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> and and God, he, he's, he, in a sense, is not a fair God. He, he favors us above the wicked. Yes, he wants to bless the wicked. But in these trying circumstances, it's those that will declare favor. It's those that will release favor over their businesses. It's those that will release favor over their congregations. It's those that will release favor of their ministries. It's those that will release favor of, um, over the, uh, whatever God has um, uh, prospered you and put your hands to work to. It's those that will understand and, and declare and speak and, and refuse to give up. I, re I want to just share with you tonight that what I am um, ministering to you, I've had to learn to walk and live all my life. And when I completed my matric, um, I went to study uh, for uh, as a home economist um, and in my third year of study, we would go and we would do our practicals in, in, in the holiday seasons. And I was working for Barclays Bank at the time, and I was in charge of a very, very large kitchen. And believe it or not, I can cook. Many people think I can't. <laughs> um, I trained as, as a, an economist. I specialized in nutrition. I'm a nutritionist. <laughs> and so... Um, and so I was in charge of this, and I had a very, very, very difficult um, boss. She was an old, old German lady, and she was full of hatred. She was full of revenge, and, and she would take it out on us. Hello, Rada from Norway. And she would take it out on us, and we, we had to work very, very hard with her. And I was so insecure. I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. I, Went through very, very. Um, I've been through very difficult times in my life, and and so I had to learn to overcome this. And one day God began to speak to me, and He said, "I want you to declare that you have favor." And whenever I was nice to her, she would be terribly, terribly angry and and revenge, full of um, bitterness and hatred towards me. And I began to speak the word of God and I began to say, Lord, I thank you for whoever you bring me into contact with today. I have favor. And I began to say, I have favor. I've forgotten her name with Mrs. And I said, I, I have favor. And I remember walking into work one day and God suddenly turned this woman's heart towards me. And I'd sown all these seeds of favor. You see, I, I began to demonstrate it in the natural. And I sowed these seeds of favor. And it so turned out that after uh, our year of practicals, we were in our third year, uh, that I, I was actually given the highest award in, in the company uh, by this woman. And I know that that was the favor of God upon me. 
Amen. I know that that God opened those doors that it was absolutely impossible. And and the folk here tonight, you're watching and you have a very, very difficult boss. You have a very, very difficult, you're facing very, very difficult circumstances. And God is saying to you that he's releasing favor for you. He's releasing, the, the Lord is saying to you this week that there's somebody you have to approach your bank manager about something God is saying to you, he's going to give you favor. He's going to give you favor. He's going to give you favor. And so I've learned that in, in difficult situations, and Bill will tell you when we are facing uh, possibly situations with his company, that we begin to declare the favor of God. We begin to prophesy favor into these situations. And we now automatically expect it. It, we don't have to fight for it. It's, it's, we've passed from standing, um, maybe, uh, are we, um, do we have doubts and things like that? We've passed from doubts into the reality of it. That here in this very, very difficult um, uh, 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 oppression that we're going through, financial oppression, God is releasing favor, and he wants to give you favor. There's somebody that you need favor with the, the, your colleagues in your workplace. God will turn it. God will turn it for you. Amen. Yeah, and, you know, um, I want to bring a little bit of balance here. You know, it's all very well um, confessing favor, and that's great. Because Janet and I, we, whenever we go into a city, or we, we, always, con, con, we mm. always say we fire favored going in and we favored going out. That is our prayer. But, you know, the thing is we need to understand that God's promises are yea and amen. Mm. But God is not obligated to keep the promises if we don't stick to the conditions. Mm. Because, you know, the Bible says only the love of God is unconditional. Most of the promises that God gives us have conditions to it. And so when we don't meet the conditions, it does not mean that God is obligated to come through with the promise. Mm. So these are things that we need to understand that God has made a way, no matter where we are, to come back to it by confessing our sin, and God forgives us from and forgets it as from the forest, the east is to the west. So don't let your heart condemn you. So if anything which we've spoken that you might feel a little bit condemned about, don't feel condemned about it because that's not what God wants you to do. God wants us to, to, to put aside this and to walk past it and to walk and get back into the favor of God. Because it's your heart that condemns you. Yeah. So, you know, um, we need to really, really know that in John uh, 15, 4, it says that we need to remain in Christ mm -hmm. and that he will remain in us. And then we can ask whatever we want. So that when his word remains in us, we will find that God will come and we get supernatural favor. Mm -hmm. um, it's not because of what we do, but because of whose we are. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, um, come back to uh, come back to whenever you find that you. I, I always say to you that I'm quick to repent and quick to forgive. These are the things that is a lifestyle for me: quick to repent and quick to forgive. Um, and that's a Christian lifestyle. And really, otherwise, what happens? We give the enemy a place, and then favor, though it is a promise of God. Okay, doesn't seem to work for us. Amen. Yes. Amen. So let's have a look. It says, Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So here's the sun, here's the shield. He gives grace and glory. He gives grace and favor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Okay? So favor comes to those that walk uprightly. Favor comes... And, and breaks the barriers. Favor comes and brings the impossible. And if we look at Noah, the favor of God was upon him. If we look at Joseph from finding favor in the pit to becoming prime minister of the land. Okay? We look at Daniel, who was put in the lion's den. The favor of God shut the mouth of the lions. You see, favor will do incredible um, things for you. Let's have a look at the benefits of favor. 
First of all, favor brings success. Okay? Favor changes insecurity to faith and courage. Favor brings promotion. Favor also attracts jealousy. Okay, so there's nobody here tonight that does not want to be a success. Favor changes insecurity to faith and courage. You see, I've learned with the favor of God on my life that in the most diabolical situations where I could be so insecure, I stand up and I know that the favor of God is on me and therefore I refuse to receive the intimidation of the enemy. I refuse to receive the lies of the enemy. I refuse to receive what people would say because I know the favor of God is upon me. So it changes you from being one that is so intimidated to becoming one that is so successful. Favor draws success. Yeah. You see, let's have a look. Favor brings promotion. Tonight, God wants to give you that promotion. He wants to promote your business. You see, if we look at the news and we see what's happening amongst these PPE tenders and, and all this manipulation, all this witchcraft, it should be the believers that are in government tonight that should be receiving these tenders. Amen. And so you, as a marketplace minister tonight, should be speaking and should be declaring that God's favor is upon your business, that you are going over and not under, that you're the head and not the tail, because wherever you walk, um, those steps, that ground has been given to you. Yeah. These people tonight that are in sales, and God is saying to you, he wants to multiply your sales. Through a favor mentality. He wants to bring you through with his favor and he wants you to wear that favor as of the garment. Yeah, and when when you carry favor, it's not that you you are uh, arrogant. Mm -hmm. It's not that you it you means you become confident in God. Mm -hmm. And confidence is what attracts people. To you when when you do business and you you work with people and you're confident not in confident in your own ability but confident in that god's ability is working through you mm -hmm. people come to you without you even having to ask them people would ask you advice without you even having to say anything mm -hmm. because the favor of god is breeding bringing confidence in you and people give people people give um Promotion to people that are confident. Um, promotion comes to people. Work comes to people. Mm -hmm. People give business to people who are confident. Mm -hmm. They don't give it to people that are insecure because that confidence is mm -hmm. rubbing off. That means that favor is bringing mm -hmm. the confidence mm -hmm. of God in you. Amen. Yes. You see, favor brings through your confession that which is in the spirit realm to becoming reality for you. We don't just want to know about God's favor. We want to wear God's favor. We want to uh, cover ourselves with that garment tonight. We want our finances to be covered with the garment of favor. We want our companies to be covered and smothered with the garment of favor. You see, Joseph had such favor in the prison that in one day he was promoted from being in the lowest part of the prison. If you study uh, that situation, he, he had rat soup and he ate dry bread. That's what he lived through. But look what God did in that prison, promoted him to being prime minister of the land. And you see, as you begin to uh, enjoy your present circumstances and you begin to start growing in the favor of God in your office, as you begin to start growing in the favor, you will begin to see tonight. And the Lord is saying to you that I'm going to begin to increase your territory. The Lord is saying, I'm increasing your territory. I'm going to increase my favor upon your life. And you will grow and you will grow. And you will see the impossibility come forth. Declare over your church. Declare and speak forth that you are a favored entity tonight. That your education 
education um, uh, 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 department favors you, uh, begin to speak forth that there's favor wherever you go, whatever you put your hands to. And remember, I always teach that you have not because you ask not. Mm. So in your time with the Lord, ask him, God, I'm asking for favor today. Mm. Mm. Lord, today I'm asking you, I'm going into this meeting. I thank you, Lord, for your favor. Lord, I thank you. I'm, I'm going to work today, Lord. I know it's a difficult situation, but mm. I thank you for your favor. Mm. I'm asking God in advance for his favor. So favor will arrive that will come into my heart that I'm expecting favor because I've asked a living mm. God mm. that he would give me favor. Mm. So these are the things that we can do practically every day mm. Pray the favor of God. Pray, thank you, Lord, for I'm asking you for favor today. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the favor that you're giving me. So um, and just um, know that as you do that, confidence will arise in you, and you will see the hand of God move supernaturally for you because we serve a supernatural God. The kingdom of God is a supernatural God. Amen. Now, just remember that Daniel never had a... a, um, a um, he never had a complex of persecution. <laughs> do you and I have a, a complex of persecution? Many of us do in this financial um, time, this time of oppression, this time where we're being stretched. We've got this uh, persecution in terms of lack and we're not going to come through and this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And God is saying to you tonight, Put that away. Put that away from you. Put it away. Put that persecution complex away from you. Choose not to receive it tonight. And walk out of your door tomorrow morning with knowing that the favor of God is upon you. Daniel knew his authority. And that's why when he was put in that lion's den, and you might be in the lion's den in your situation tonight, you have authority by the favor of God on you. And you have authority to see those circumstances changing around you. Yes. And, you know, um, I really want to encourage, you know, um, maybe we can go into a little bit of time of, of prophesying for those people that have come up. I've written down your names. and so. But I just felt that as I was preparing um, uh, this morning, that um, for a word for Abigail and that this is a season of growth and the Lord is growing you spiritually into a great woman of faith. Mm. And it is not, and it's a time for you to hold fast mm. to the promises of God mm. and his word over you. Amen. Mm. Yes. Amen. And I just see uh, there's somebody by the name of Lorraine and, and God is saying to you tonight that he favors you. Amen. And you're feeling very distressed. You're feeling, in a way, I see hopelessness written over you. Amen. And God is saying that he's going to come and he's going to give you a dream concerning your situation. You've lost much. Uh, whatever you seem to put your hand to just never seems to work out. But God is saying to you tonight, he's going to speak to you in a dream. And God is going to cause the talents you have a a, 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 a a grace on your life as an artist there's something about creativity artistry uh, for you and God is going to open doors I see a lot of income coming through the arts for for Lorraine tonight amen and the Lord says start to speak his favor as he speaks to you in this dream and um, I had a word for, um, and I might have missed it, for, for Kaylee Jackson. And I, I really felt the Lord saying, remember where you come from. And that know that he is a good, good father. And he will continue his good work in you and through you. Amen. Mm. And, and the Lord is just showing me that the folk watching here tonight, that you've lost um, much uh, I feel that somebody's even lost a house. You lost a house um, and possibly you had to go into sequestration because of some bad business deals. Amen. 
and God is going to turn that around. And the Lord is saying to you, start to speak the favor of God over this situation in terms of the lost, the house that was lost. And the Lord is saying he's going to give you back even better because yeah. he's going to favor you so financially in this time. And I can testify that God always gives back because I went into sequestration and God has gave me back better. And, um, you know, I really feel that there are many of you that might feel that you've missed it with God. And you need to know today God is a God of the second chance and the third chance. And no matter how far we've missed it, okay, we can always come back in repentance. It's a way God has made for us to clear the slate and he holds nothing against us. So come back be quick to repent, and as you do that, you come back in with line with God and with the favor of God and man. Amen. Don't let the the things of the past, don't let the missed opportunity or the things you've missed be the thing that stops your favor mm. from working. Amen. Mm. Now, just uh, feel uh, for at Albert tonight that the Lord is saying to you, um, keep trusting for favor. Keep trusting for favor in that situation that um, your pastor promised to open the door and, and in that particular situation. And the Lord is saying, son, speak for favor, speak for favor, speak for favor. Because you see, God wants to hasten some situations in our lives. He wants to quicken some situations. And if we don't speak for that favor, over those situations. He's got nothing really to work with. He takes our faith. He takes our words. Okay. And there's somebody that you need to lay hands on your finances with your accountant tonight. Okay. There's somebody in your business. You're worried about the end of this month. And God is saying to you, lay hands and speak Put the favor of God, release the favor of God, release the favor of God, and you will see a quickening. You're going to see your finances turn around before the end of the month. There's going to be a contract that is going to come in, and you're going to see God turn those finances around. Yeah, and I got the name of Maria, and I see all this negativity around you, which is affecting your faith in Jesus. Now, this can apply to more, so those mm -hmm. that this um, feel that this is a word for you. It might mm. be for Maria, but it can also be for you. And that the Lord is saying that you need to close your ears mm. to what you are hearing and mm. to guard your heart mm. to this negativity mm. and to put your trust in Him. Amen. Yes. Amen. We speak favor. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, somebody by the name of uh, Nitsika, Nitsika, Okay, Natsika and Felicity. And so the Lord just bless you tonight, Natsika. Um, thank you, Lord. And and I don't know why, but I see something uh, in terms of a business that God wants to open for you in the fashion industry. Um, there's somebody related to you or you're working with somebody who wants to give you an opportunity in the fashion industry. Okay, it's something that uh, God wants to open that's new for you. And the Lord is saying, yes, he's going to open those doors that are closed. Okay. And the Lord is saying, write that vision down, write that vision down, write that vision down. And as you write the vision down, as you wait on him, it's going to become a reality. It's going to become a reality. Nitsika, I see the fashion industry, I see modeling, I see, and the Lord blessing you, and the Lord really raising you or the person who you're working with, something like that, really raising you up to truly, truly be on the forefront and, and to be a very, very prominent uh, person. Hallelujah. Thank yes. you, Lord. And, you know, I spoke about having us being in a season of discontentment. And I really felt there's, there's someone out there that you really have resentment towards your bosses. And I really feel the Lord saying to you tonight that you need to learn to sow. Yes, you need to sow forgiveness. Yes, you need to sow mercy. Yes, you need to sow grace. And as you do this, you will receive abundance of what you sow. Amen. Yes. Now, um, somebody is asking for the Jews for Jesus uh, banking details. We don't have them on the slide, but just send us a, a mail to admin at Rock Ministries and we'll send them to you or just look on our website. And you see, 
why we taught on the Jews is because the Jews are highly favored. And when you sow into a Messianic Jewish um, ministry, that favor comes on you. You see, we have to sow favor to reap favor. Remember that. Every time you sow words of kindness, every time you love, okay, you will receive it. Why? What you sow is what you receive. So as you sow favor, God gives you favor. Yeah, and I really feel for Brett that God has got greatness in this, a destiny of greatness for you. Mm. But um, what is holding you back is the, your own, you, the way you see yourself. And the Lord is saying that you need to see yourself the way he sees you. He sees you with greatness, that he has put the potential of greatness in you. Mm. And so tonight's message will really be something that would minister to you, that you need to start seeing yourself the way God sees you, as a child of God and highly favored. Amen. I want to just share with you that when I had, um, when I was dying and I had no money, I was almost literally raised from the dead, and I had to restart my life, and I wasn't allowed to go back into ministry. That's where my nutrition background came in. And so what I would do was I would walk from block to block, and I started one of these um, uh, uh, sandwich selling businesses. And I would just confess favor. And I would, every block I went into, I'd say, thank you, Lord, for your favor upon my business today. Thank you that these people are buying my sandwiches. Thank you, Lord, that you are restoring me financially, that everything is coming back into my life. And you know, my business grew so, so well and so big <laughs> that I was able even to buy a little apartment. I went into television production and I had the favor of God in that I was able to produce even for the SABC within a year, uh, two years of, of leaving hospital. God favored me so much, but you see, I worked on it. I want to share that with you tonight. I worked on it. I made it my confession. I received it. I renewed my mind to it. I refused to accept when people said no, uh, that the, and the enemy would come and he'd say, this business is not going to grow. And I would say, yes, the favor of God is upon me. The favor of God is upon my sandwiches. <laughs> And eventually what would happen was that business people would wait for my company. They would wait for our produce. <laughs> and they would wait for us because the favor of God was on us. And they wouldn't buy from other companies. They would wait for us. So I've worked very, very hard at it. It doesn't come easily. You have to speak it. You have to be diligent. And I feel God is saying to somebody tonight that you've kind of lost hope and you're thinking nothing can change for you concerning your present circumstances. The Lord says, work at it, speak it, declare it, declare that you are a favored, um, you know, that you're the favored producer, that you're a favored um, uh, engineer, that you're a favored teacher, whatever, just declare it and you will see what God will do. Yes, and you know, um, there's some of you that might say, well, you know, Lord, at the moment, I don't really have much faith, okay? And I really feel the Lord saying, it doesn't take a lot of faith. It only takes a little bit of faith. So work with the faith that you've got. Mm. Okay? It's not about how much faith you've got. It is that any little bit of faith is enough for God. So just work with the faith that you've got, the little you might have, and you will see that's all that God needs in this time. Amen. Yes, so just to end off with, it was Lindiwi Tembi. Ananda and Pia that sent in um, requests for words. So we don't have time to read them, but we've got wonderful words for you that we'll be sending to you. And then there's somebody by the name of Rui that also uh, requested a word. We'll be sending words to you. So we've got some really good words. Uh, God has blessed our team. And, and so you'll, you can expect to receive this week. Amen. So, yeah. can I mm -hmm. finish? Yes, and this morning when the Lord kind of wakes me up early, I don't know why, but then He's seeming to wake me up very early. And I really felt the Lord saying to many 
to here tonight. Today is a new, tomorrow is a new day. Mm. It, Amen. It's the Lord gave me the word, it's a new day. Okay. And um, it's no good looking back. All right. You can't change the past. You can only change the future. So mm. tomorrow, every day is a new day. Okay, mm. and that day is the Lord has sufficient for you for that day. Mm. So tomorrow, when you get up, you can start to say, "Lord, it's a new day, mm. and the favor of God is yes. on me Amen. today." Amen. Yes. So let's just pray, and we say, "Father, we thank you for that favor tonight. Mm. Put your hand upon your your breast, your uh -huh. heart. We receive that favor tonight, Lord." I declare that every single person who is watching this program, Lord, the favor of God is upon them. The favor of God is upon you. And I release that favor over you tonight for the impossibility to become possible. Speak to that situation. Speak to that mountain and release the favor of God upon it. I release favor upon you and upon yes, your circumstances you. tonight. And Lord, we thank you for testimonies that will come forth in Jesus' mighty name. God doing the absolute impossible for you tonight in Jesus' name. God is not limited to your age. He's not limited to your circumstances. Your pedigree is not limited to your race. He's not limited. God is a limitless God. He's limited to you believing his word and speaking his word. And the Lord is saying once again, I see it so clearly, as you speak forth the word of favor, God will hasten things to come upon, upon your path and into your path and do that, make the impossibility possible. Amen. And don't forget, tomorrow is a new day. Every day is a new day. It's a new day for favor. If you didn't have favor today, tomorrow is a new day and you can have favor tomorrow. Amen. God bless you and we will see you next week. And please send us a testimony and put your faith to to um, believing for small yeah. areas where God's favor can break forth and you will grow into it. And you, if you need a word, please send um, uh, email, email us at uh, admin at rockministries.co.za And we'll do our best to hand it to a team to come back to you. Mm -hmm. If we haven't reported back to those tonight, we will be sending you the words that we have for you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good night. Uh, Lots of bye. love. We bye. love you and appreciate you. Bye. bye. <laughs>